Hey, my name is Wendy Olson, and I am a vision rehab therapist from the Lighthouse of Collier here in sunny Naples, Florida. And I am Rick Hart. I am the assistive technology instructor also here at the Lighthouse of Collier in sunny Florida. And we're going to talk to you today about various low vision aids and devices from low tech to high tech. I'm going to open my presentation here. Okay. Again, this will this is a presentation on low vision aids. At various centers for vision loss, such as the Lighthouse of Collier, basically we like to say we teach tools, tips, and techniques to help people maintain and obtain independence. Well, what are some ways to, um, some low tech or easy ways to increase visual access? Um, like I said, there are low tech ways and there are high tech. So we're gonna focus on some very easy things you can do in the home to instantly increase the visual access. The first slide we have here is on home adaptations. And basically, if you can look behind me, I have a, a plastic plate up here on a white background and you can see there is no contrast at all which can be difficult for people to find their plate. Um, simply adding contrast, whoop, simply adding contrast for example we have a cutting board down at the bottom a black cutting board and somebody has a yellow vegetable can help increase visual access. Um, some people add accommodations or contrast to the bath bathrooms. As you can see in the picture here, we have a white on white countertop and versus um, on the left, somebody uses a darker countertop. They've added simple accommodations such as switching the light, plate, light switch cover, adding a dark contrasting towel, using um, a white cup on a black background can really make a big difference in terms of locating items. Um, also, when it comes to navigating stairs, adding some high contrast tape to help you find the edge of the, the step. And for technology, what are some tools we can use? Oh, for high magnification, uh, smartphones. Contrast. Oh, contrast, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, oh, yeah, different kinds of keyboards. Uh, there's keyboard tape. Uh, you can put the letters on. So if you have a keyboard you like, you can buy individual stickers for each key. So it could be high contrast black on white or high contrast white on black. They make various different colors. So you could just put those stickers on the keys and help you better see the keyboard. And if you can see in our slide here, we have a uh, keyboard with black letters on yellow, which can make a huge yes. difference, especially for those of you who are hunters and peckers on the keyboard. All right, next slide. Um, controlling the glare in your home or adding light. Would you like to say something about that? Sure. Glare couldn't be a num could be a huge enemy in the home, um, especially if you're at a computer. If you're sitting somewhere, closing the blinds, facing the computer away from the light, putting it in a room where it's more easy to, easy to handle the sunlight or manipulate the sunlight um, all, is always easier. Getting rid of that glare as best you can. Shades, blinds, or just finding a nice place in the room where the glare doesn't hit. And to offset the glare, if you do have to shut the blinds, some good lighting would really help out. And mm -hmm. I think I have a light. Here. And we do have a couple examples of task lights. Uh, they say people with vision impairments. I've, I've heard different uh, quotes. I've heard sometimes they need four to five times as much light as a person without a vision impairment. All right, this handy dandy little thing is a light. It's beautiful. It's got a handle, very lightweight. Batteries, it is rechargeable, but it also takes batteries. So you can just flip this thing up put three or four batteries in there. I think it takes four AA or four AAA. It's off. 
and there is no on off switch. That's great about this light. I could just flip this up, bam, there is light. This could sit down right on the table for reading. So I could read with this. Now that we set the clocks back and it's getting darker sooner everywhere, this is also so easy. I could hold this and walk and light up the whole area in front of me. It's portable enough to even bring to a restaurant. If you're in a dark restaurant, you wanna flip it open, set it right on the table to see the menu. Uh, great, great tool. I've had clients bring this to card games as well. So using lighting uh, for games, like we mentioned for mobility or even for things such as in the kitchen and, and cutting and cooking can help. All right, another um, adaptation in the home that you can quickly and easily use is just increasing the size of the item. Uh, we have a couple items that are on the screen, for example, large print playing cards. Um, we, there are remote controls. We actually have one of those that they have in the corner. Huge buttons can help. Also the buttons are spaced apart. That can make a huge difference. Um, large print calendars this is probably the number one thing that we give away. Uh, and it's got enough space to put your appointments in. We have large print pill boxes. Um, we have large print checks. A lot of people don't know that many banks provide large print checks and large print um, bills for the same, same services they would for regular, regular checks. There's usually not a fee for that. Yeah, bold lined paper. Uh, they have felt tip markers for writing that do not bleed through the paper. I have an example too. On the left, I wrote a grocery list with pencil and cursive. On the right, we have bold line markers and uppercase letters and a marker. And look at the difference, just a simple accommodation could make. That's contrast and increasing size. Okay. Um, also, did you want to talk about the phone, how you can increase size on your phones and computers? Um, sure. Um, smartphone, probably the greatest tool ever invented. Um, the iPhone does everything. A lot of the Androids do everything as well. Um, my preference is the iPhone. I love it. I can increase the font. I could bold the font. I could adjust the colors to my font and I could just open one. There's a, and there's a picture um, yeah. of a phone and a computer. So I don't know if you could see that, but I have a reverse background. I don't see much, so I just don't need the glare. So I just cut back on my glare and my phone talks to me anyway. So everything I touch and do, the phone says out loud and talks to me. Um, you can make the icons larger or smaller. There's, there's scanning devices. There's not much you can't do with a phone or a computer. Computers can be magnified with software. Uh, the most popular software out there now for a PC would be Fusion. That is Zoom Text and JAWS combined. Zoom Text being the magnification software, JAWS being the speech output software, meaning it talks. And they work together. You can magnify the screen so you could still use the pointer. And if you have a progressive eye condition or if you lose your vision altogether, you can switch over to the speech output and then the computer will talk to you. Perfectly, completely adaptable uh, phones, computers, it, it's all available. And um, I always like to teach the easiest things first. If uh, you do have some vision, simply hitting the control plus button when you're on the internet will magnify the screen. Each time you hit the control plus, control minus will demagnify the screen. That's a built-in capability uh, that I believe both Macs and PCs have for the internet. Yeah, the command, the or the command plus command yeah. uh, minus. It would be different on a, similar on a Mac. Yes, it's all available. Mm -hmm. But whichever key you use would be different. Okay, labeling and organizing. So organization, Rick, I'm gonna let you talk about organization as a person who is, he's, Rick is blind. I don't know if we mentioned that. Rick is blind. <laughs> so um, why is organization important? Why is labeling important? A place for everything everything in its place. 
if I have my countertop organized and I know where everything is, I can walk into that room and efficiently take a knife from the count, take a knife from where it belongs, grab the cutting board from where it belongs, get the vegetables out of the fridge where they belong in the fridge and chop a salad. I can do all that without seeing. You put me in somebody else's kitchen where their organization is different. I won't even find the knife. I won't find the cutting board. I'll be lucky to find the fridge, <laughs> let alone look on the shelves to find vegetables. So understanding where things are and where they belong is huge. Um, diff your system, whatever works for you is the system you should use. Um, I, I'm big into rubber bands, soap and shampoo. They come in the same kind of bottle. Well, you put a rubber band around the shampoo. When you go to grab for them, you feel both bottles. The one with the rubber band, it's the shampoo. Uh, simple as that. Same with medication. Medications. You could have a morning and an evening medication. Put the rubber band around the morning or around the evening. Um, it's uh, bump dots. Show the bump, bump dots. Yes. Yeah, so, um, if you look at the slide, you can see that um, the woman is accessing the microwave with bump dots. And also, I believe that's a phone. Oh, no, that's her microwave um, adapted so she can find the buttons. She doesn't have to grab a light or a magnifier, or perhaps she has you know, really reduce vision and can't see the numbers at all. Uh, everything at everything in the household the can phone. be accessible and it can be done by somebody who is totally blind. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not many things I'm not going to do uh, other than driving and flying an airplane uh, with the right equipment, the right contrast, the right organization. I can do everything I need to do at home. Um, paperwork, labeling paperwork, making sure that everything is organized and everything has a place and everything is put in its place. Mm -hmm. um, some of the hardest things about organizing are training our sighted housemates. Uh, they can see, so they grab something, they don't worry about putting it back in the exact same spot. Um, it could be a foot away and it might as well not even be on that counter. Because if it's not where I put it, I wouldn't even know where to look. So organization is huge. I think that's a great starting point coming up with a good system. Mm -hmm. Using, um, I always suggest to my clients that they have a little basket in every mm -hmm. room, a basket to put their remote or their keys or their phone. It's a go-to place where they can always find things. Maybe in the uh, bathroom, it would be their most used toiletries. In the office, uh, their their checkbook, their notepad, their their pen and paper, whatever they normally use, their keys. Um, and even they could even get a dark color basket to put on a white table or vice versa. So simplifying your environment, getting rid of miscellaneous things you don't use anymore, especially clothes, um, really can make a huge difference. Uh, as you can see in the slides, they have chemicals that are labeled with large print. Looks like someone just took a three by five card and put it in large print. Um, and they've also adapted the canned goods. Um, I've taken a just a simple roll of magnet tape, I guess it's called, and put in large print potatoes. So I can easily take off, take this label off, put it on the fridge. And when I go shopping, I can relabel it or something as simple as a tea for tomatoes. Um, so there's numerous low-tech ways and a little bit higher tech. There's something called the label. It's called a pen friend or talking label wand. It looks like a little pen. It's basically just a recording device. I'm going to turn it on. And this works with little oh, audio stickers or audio labels. And what's underneath these stickers, these round stickers, are is a magnetic strip. So I have pre-recorded these little, and I put them on a magnet. Whole white potatoes. Whole white potatoes. So I recorded my voice. And if I really can't see the large print, I'm just going to put it on a magnet. Whole white potatoes. Now I know I'm not using up my peas or my tomatoes. I'm getting the right um, item, the right food item I want. And when I'm done, I can just put this on the refrigerator Whole white potatoes. and read it again. Now, 
The nice thing is, is these stickers can be used on various items. There's also, you can put it on a file folder. I put a yellow one on a file folder here and report taxes 2017. taxes 2017. And this literally has about three buttons. So it's very, very easy to use. Um, so that is a device for labeling that's low tech. I'm going to show you one other one and then we'll show you something that's a little bit higher tech. This is called the Voxcom. This is about as easy as it gets. It's just a little card. So a lot of our clients can no longer identify their clothes. Um, all I did was record my voice. There's a button here on the side to record, or once it's recorded, I push it down. Black Marlins t-shirt. Black Marlins t-shirt, it says. Oh, look who here. I have a black Marlins t-shirt right here. So I would hang this on the hanger. And um, there's other ways to label things uh, with pins and buttons and stuff. But this is one way you could put this around medication bottles. You could put it around what chemicals. Yeah, different um, chemicals. You could make a calendar. Jars, calendars. I have people making calendars out of out of these that can no longer uh, reprint. I think it's all based on your imagination. If you come up with a system, if you find something you can use it for, that's perfect. Yeah. Now I have one other item I wanted to show you, unless you have your Eli stickers. I don't have I don't. Eli okay. sticker. No. Um, there's an app and the, the, we're showing you items that it's not just one company, several companies make these. This happens to be um, a company called Envision Eli. And for about $30, you get a stack of um, audio stickers that work with a smartphone. So I'm gonna open the app using Siri. Open Eli. Welcome back. Now, scan the label by pointing your smartphone camera with the Eli app. So now, if I want to organize all my paperwork, like my bills and such, and I need to keep it, I have placed one of the Eli stickers on the upper right corner, and I'm literally, I just open the app. I'm going to wave it over because I've already recorded it. It's going to find the sticker. Lighthouse of Collier Workshop Agenda. Is this what you were looking for? Tap once to scan another label. Tap twice if you want to change the recorded message. Okay, so I was, I was trying to see if I have anything else labeled here, but um, I could put a sticker on a medication bottle and I can record for as long as I want. I could record recipes. What else? You could take do? notes of any kind, phone numbers, addresses, notes, um, shopping lists. So you could just record it on the label, put it in your wallet, purse, whatever you may have, take it out, point your phone at it, and um, listen to your voice memo. It's more or less just a voice memo. Mm -hmm. So I've had people put them on credit cards. Sure. They don't know where, which is their debit card, which is their credit card. They put little stickers on it, open the app, wave their phone over it. Now they know which credit card they have. So again, low tech to high tech, there's great options. I wanted to show you one more thing before we move along. And this is actually Rick's idea. Fill this medication bottle on top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wanna show it to him? Uh, to label the lid for medications, mo most people who take medications are gonna be getting the same medication every month. So if you have two different kinds, in this one, there's a thumbtack sticking out of the top of it. So when I go get the new prescription, all I'll do is take the lid off and then take the lid with the thumbtack on it and put it on the new jar for the new month. Now I know it's the same medication as it was from the last month. Mm -hmm. So labeling the lids on the medication jars is the way to go because most times, not 19 times out of 20, it's coming in the same jar. So the lid will fit. And if it doesn't, uh, you, you figure you're out plan B. <laughs> plan B is something a lot of us blind people live with all the time. So yes, that is a great system going with the lids because that is something you could easily take off the jar and put on the new jar. Here's one that was, I just used, uh, believe it or not, I had green nail polish. <laughs> so I put it on top and again, you could reuse it if you can see color. So simple, low tech to high tech. I'd start with the low tech if, if, um, 
if you're able, if you do have some remaining vision, which I'm sure most of you do. Okay, um, now I guess we've kind of covered the next slide. The next slide is labeling and organizing high-tech options. So we did talk about the uh, Eli stickers, um, there are there is a company called Way Around, which um, there's a picture there with the white beans. I guess they're they're reading. So those are commercially available magnets and buttons and other kind of labeling devices. Um, do you want to tell them about the barcode scanners? Yes, there are. If you want to get into high tech with different devices to help, mm -hmm. there are a number of different apps that can help me. I'll turn the volume up on this phone so you could hear it. I could scan items, I could voice record items, I could scan an item, I could email it to myself, I could store it in my computer for organizational sake. If I'm shopping, I can go, I'm gonna find, seeing AI is a great app. That's gonna, I'm gonna go shopping if I can't read labels in the store, well, I could still get out shopping. When I get to the, when I get to the aisle I need, I'll point the can, I'll point the camera at the can. Move the can up. So, Oops, there sorry. we go. It reads the Processing. barcode. Hunts, tomatoes, diced basil, garlic, and oregano. It tells me what it is. So now I know. And if I shop in the same store all the time, I'll go to Costco, Sam's Club, whatever store I go to, I frequent the same store. I memorize the store. So I can get to the aisle where the salad dressings are, where the canned food is, and I could grab know right about where I need to go. Then I start grabbing cans and say, oh, this looks like it, scan it. If it is, great. A perfect example for that is I can get to the dairy section and I could find the milk right away. I don't know if it's whole 2% or 1%. This, this barcode app is perfect for that. It allows me to grab a gallon of milk out, scan the code, whole milk, perfect. I know I have it, put it in the cart, I'm on my way. That's one. Uh, there are, there's a scanning app on here. I could take a picture of my mail, my bills. I could share it with myself or just read it out loud and send it to myself. And like I said, store things, create files in my computer. Great high tech ways to stay independent and organize my life. Uh, being organized, it is so much easier to do things correctly the first time than it is to go back and try to redo things as a blind person. Um, so getting it done right the first time, scanning it, organizing it, filing it properly is crucial because then I know exactly where to go to find what I was looking for. Okay, and they have a couple other um, apps and devices. Um, Rick showed you the Scene AI app, S-E-E-I-N-G-A-I. -E -E artificial intelligence. Like artificial intelligence. There's also one on here called Be My Eyes, which are, it's basically volunteer helps and you're using your camera, kind of like a volunteer FaceTime. Um, wonderful, wonderful app for people who are, live alone and they can't read print. Maybe they need help with somebody reading the thermostat. Um, finding out what kind of tea they're they're opening, yeah. um, helping them pick out clothes. It, or... it, it's endless. Um, I've used it to walk from, I was getting my hair cut and I was gonna meet my wife in whole, in home goods. I said, yeah, I could find that, no problem. Well, I walked out from getting my hair cut and said, oh dear, I am not gonna find home goods. So I opened up that app and I pointed it at the facade of the building and I used my trusty cane, white cane, to keep myself from bumping into things. And as I'm walking, the volunteer who's on the other end of my phone is looking through the camera, calling out the names of all the businesses that I'm walking past. He said, there you are, that's, that's Home Goods. Walk straight in, the doors are right in front of you. I said, thank you, I could find it from here. Wonderful app. And like I said before with other things, it's your imagination that's gonna stop you from using a lot of these things. Um, it's limitless. Okay, thank you. Okay, next slide, o optical aids and devices. Um, there are stand and handheld magnifiers, which Rick will show you. And again, these should be prescribed by a low vision specialist, which is um, a doctor, an optometrist, 
um, optometrist that um, specializes in low vision. Here's a lighted handheld. That's These are desktop. nice. Oh, I'm sorry, desktop. If I were to read some print. These are nice because you can keep it flat on the page to see. And, and then there's a handheld. And what's also nice about it is the light, it's self-contained with light. You, you need no light in the room whatsoever. These are also good for restaurants, uh, reading under any lighting circumstances. It's, and like Wendy said, once you set it down on the surface, that's the fixed focus. Mm -hmm. You don't have to move it up and down to try to find the focus. So those are nice. Especially for people who have tremors. Yeah. And now here is the handheld ones, also lit, self-contained. Um, however, this will fit in a pocket, it'll fit in a purse. Now you do have to find the focus with this. Uh, this is a rectangular lens. The thing with the rectangular lenses is once they get stronger than 3.5X, they all come in round lenses. So if you can handle a 3.5X or smaller, you can get a rectangular lens, which most people seem to like if they can see through them. And I have a five, this is a three X. I have a five X and here's something else to consider. Uh, these are all self lit. Here's a five X. You can see it's rounded. And then this is, I believe a 14 X you yeah, said? Yeah. Look how much smaller it is. So the stronger it is, the smaller it gets. The so smaller you, the window. Yes, the, the window is. So if you can use a smaller strength magnifier, you'll get a bigger. And this is why you want to get the, the smallest magnification yes. you can com comfortably read. And this is why you should see a low vision specialist who can prescribe these. Um, and they can also prescribe, if you look down at the bottom of the slide, there's a woman with um, built-in telescopes. I don't know if it's for intermediate or distance vision. Um, and there's here's another telescope, monoculars. So they can prescribe some pretty fancy um, devices depending on what your task is, whether it's access, accessing the computer, searching for street signs, reading board men, menus. Um, seeing a low vision specialist can be worth, worth your time, especially if it's enabling you, if it would enable you to do a task that you could not do before. Electronic okay. magnifier? The last, um, yeah, we'll, oh, oh you want to do that last one? We'll do that last one. Okay. Uh, we also have talking devices. Um, and I'll just kind of go through them quickly. Talking watches are one of the most popular. Of course, now we have our phones and we can ask the time. Um, talking thermostats. Rick, don't you have a talking thermostat? Yes. It's, it's, it's a wonderful device. Um, up until three years ago, I could, I, if I were to use a thermostat at home, it was hit or miss. Uh, turning it on, forget it. I could adjust the temperature up or down, but I never really knew where the temperature was. Now they have them where they speak. I press a button, tactile button, it tells me heat, cool, auxiliary, et cetera, fan on, fan auto, and then you hit the up or down arrow for temperature control. So I could independently walk up to that thermostat, turn the air off, turn the air on, um, I'm not quite sure if it has heat because we don't haven't used the heat since I've lived down here, but um, it's it's phenomenal. I mean, all of the tools that are out there now, every one of them helps you bring back a little bit of that independence you may have lost before you use the tool, mm -hmm. and, and that's just one of them. And the bump dots on the microwave and all of these devices we're showing you today help help you regain a little bit more of that independence you may have lost um, from, with vision loss. And they also have, um, believe it or not, bottom left corner, we call that a colorino. That can actually identify colors. So you, it's important if you go to the window, you hold it up to your clothes, it will tell you the color of your clothes. Pretty amazing. Uh, talking tiles down at the bottom. Uh, especially for our clients maybe who can't handle an iPhone um, or something really high tech, you just press and record. You can record your appointments, shopping lists, to-do lists. Um, so there's a low tech item that's, that's easy to use and accessible even for the totally blind. Even talking tape measures. Um, 
And of course, um, the, the virtual assistant devices, the Alexas, yeah, the Google Googles. Homes, uh, the Alexa yeah, shows. The homes, yeah. uh, you can even shop now. It's, um, I'll be teaching a class pretty soon on shopping through Walmart using your Google Home device. Just talking to it, adding items to your cart, and asking uh, the Google Mini to deliver the items to your home. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. Okay, next slide. This would be Rick's um, category, assistive technology. He's gonna talk to you about the video magnifiers and he's gonna talk, we've talked about the apps. Um, maybe you can talk about the video magnifiers and the screen readers. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, video magnifiers are nothing more than uh, electronic magnifiers. They come in handheld devices, kind of like a regular magnifier, but it's electronic. So with an electronic magnifier, you can adjust a number of things. I'm digging for a business card. I put it in my pocket, there it is. Um, I used to use magnifiers, they no longer work for me, but you would just put, you could just put the divide, whatever it is you're looking at. Let me see if that's working. Uh -huh. Okay. And you could adjust the color, you could adjust the size. And I'm sure I'm not doing this perfectly because it's meant to be held on the table. This is also good for menus. It's good for mail. Uh, it's good for any small items you may not be able to read. And what's good about this is the magnification can be adjusted. So if your eyesight gets worse or the print is smaller, you could just make the magnification larger or you can make it smaller and you can adjust the colors. Sometimes with magazines or, or handouts or flyers, the colors the contrast might be off, you know, blue on black, red on black. You could change this to make it more visible. And this one here, if you move that camera, please. Yep. This is a desktop model. This is nothing but a magnifier. The camera is up top. This is a monitor. There's that same business card. Leave it right there. Yep. Perfect. Now I'm going to make it larger. And I could zoom this all the way in as large as I want. Yep. And then just move it around. So no matter how big I could make this to put one letter on that screen <laughs> and make it smaller. Now, if I stop touching the camera, it won't shake. And let me make it a little smaller, show you the colors. This also adjusts the colors. Some people like the high contrast negative, which is would be a white on black or yellow on black. It's really... Um, you might want to mention about the scan, that some of them will scan. Yes. Some of these devices, there is a button also where this, this, there's two cameras up here. One magnifies, the other one controls the scanner, where it will take a picture of what's under here and read it to you as well. So you could put a piece of uh, mail under there, you could put a letter under there, and you, you can have it read. Now, this is good. You could write under this as well. So you can write a check. You could balance a checkbook. You can write holiday cards, you can write birthday cards. You can look at pictures because they're in color. So you have pictures of family, grandchildren, whatever it may be, you can put a picture under there and still enjoy it. It works well with my phone. I can put my phone under there and Let's move the business card. Move the business card. Okay. And I can get it to enlarge my phone. Uh, people do this. Canned foods. There you go. Medications. Anything. The rounded, the rounded objects are a little bit more difficult because they're not flat. Uh, magnification likes flat items, but you can figure it out. It just comes with a little bit of practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's upside that, down yeah. or not. Nope. <laughs> okay. um, like I said, I no longer use magnification. Everything I use is speech output. It talks, but I grew up with the magnifiers. It's how I was able to pay my own bills, take checks. You want to move over? Oh, okay. Get I stopped sharing the screen. All right. Okay. Um, and then also Rick was going to quickly mention what a screen reader is. Yes. A screen reader is any type of software that will read what I do. So if I turn the screen reader on and I type, it will read back to me what I'm typing. If I'm doing an internet search, It'll read to me by giving um, keyboard commands what I'm reading. 
So I could jump, I can go from heading to heading. I could pull up links lists. I can move, navigate to buttons, links, uh, different paragraphs. I can open up new web searches and every command I give it, it will read out loud. So when I'm using my keyboard, a lot of times when I'm at my computer, the lid will be down. I don't even put the lid up on my laptop. I have a keyboard out and I'm listening to what the computer's telling me and I'm navigating completely with the keyboard. Um, I've never used a mouse in my life to navigate a computer. So anything a mouse user does with the computer, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say 99, 97.9% .9 of those can be done with the keyboard. And I will maybe summarize with that thought that 99 statistics say, from what I've read, that 99% of activities of daily living can be done with your eyes closed, barring driving. But um, the great thing about um, today and technology is that there basically are solutions for almost anything, for work, for home, any kind of activity. Play. Yep, for play of activity of daily living. So. Um, it's a good time if you're gonna be visually impaired, now's a good time um, because there are lots of solutions to help you maintain independence, um, obtain independence in a certain skill that maybe you've lost. Um, so it's, it's important that you contact your local yes. agency for the blind or visually impaired because they will help you with those solutions. And many of them are very simple and very easy to use. Some of them require putting in just a little bit of training time. Um, anything you wanna to add to that, Rick? No, I just think if we wanna get something done, we can do it. It's just a matter of how badly we wanna get it done, how much we need it. So uh, it may take a little bit of time, but it will pay off. And, and feeling empowered about all the independence I have is just, you know, it's a really good feeling. The more I can do on my own, the better I feel. So thank you very much for, for watching. And um, like I said, if you need any help, contact your local agency for the visually impaired.